Wallace Mama. So I just thank you so much for even no, no problem. time to join us for just a couple of questions we want to ask of you, you know. Okay. And you know, the two honest mamas, we have been around probably less than six months, and we have been decided to do this platform an opportunity to come as honest as possible, but also Right. come within truth, but also come within love, and also come with a passion and being on fire for the Lord. So, you know, That's awesome. we're not, we're, we're not experts in being a doctor or a lawyer or any of that. We just moms who've been around, who's been reared and raised by our moms. So we Right. have almost, what, 70 years of mom's experience. <laughs> All so, right. you know, with the two of us. So we just want to get on here and just kind of just, we want to come for, for the man. We want to come for the Oh, brother. yeah. We want to come for somebody who's a father and, you know, ask you a couple of questions of being, Okay. being a father and being a um. a husband and being a son and being a sibling um, to so many All right. dynamite sisters you had. So Oh, we thank you. a great man to talk to. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, uh, I'll be glad to. Uh, basically, uh, and thank you for such a gracious introduction. Trust me, it's, it's a lot to start in a podcast or a show. So I commend you guys on even beginning and, and, and prayerfully it'll blow up to something great. But um, for the most part about me, um, I'm one of seven siblings. Uh, my father was uh, Major Floyd Dobbins and Anna Dobbins, and they pretty much raised all of us in love. So I um, Did you guess say seven? I, yes, yes, I'm one of seven. That's a big family. Yeah. What number are you in the Dobbins? I'm number six Oh, out you of know. seven. <laughs> so I'm way down the bottom of the total pole. I got uh, four older sisters, um, Okay. Stacey. Yeah, Monica, Lisa, and Amy, and then Tommy is my older brother, and then Joel is the baby boy, the younger brother. So I'm number six out of that. All righty. All right. So where did you grow up in? In what, what part of the world would you say you grew up in? In, in Georgia? You know, what, where? Where you grew up at? Yeah. Well, it's kind of crazy because explaining the background to people is always comical because I was born on an army base in Fort McClellan, actually, as I'm in Alabama. But the longest we lived anywhere other than now, Georgia or Atlanta, was Oahu. We was in Hawaii um, for a period of time. We've lived in Greensboro, North Carolina a couple of times. Um, at one point, Youngstown, Ohio, because my brother was born in Ohio. Um, from my understanding, our family was stationed like from Alabama. Uh, at one point, they were stationed in Arizona. So I got a brother out there now. So it's kind of crazy because we've moved around so much um, and never really like got to park our feet or settle until like 92 when we came down to Atlanta. And then this became home for me. And that became this Atlanta became your home. So that's the ATL. Is that where we say where you hello, Yes. my partner? <laughs> what Hey. up? What up, everybody? How are you? We are great. We're so glad to have you, Sister Lisa. Two honest mamas. We are here. And we Two we got honest mamas. yes. <laughs> yes. We're just asking some questions of history of is it, it how you say is it Maka or Micah? Correct. Uh, Micah. Yeah, it's Micah. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> Hello, Micah. How are you? all right, all right. How you doing, Lisa? Glad you're on. Glad to be on here. Yes, yes. So we're just coming with him some questions, trying to get to know who he is. And, you know, he told me he comes from a family of seven. He's number six. I said, Hey. a lot of sisters, boy. Boy, oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. yeah. Did you have That's to plait right. hair? Did you have to do any other hair? Oh no, 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 no. I never got to do that. <laughs> No, I guess being number six, I was so low on the totem pole. I didn't get to do that. The first time I ever tried doing hair is um one time I tried for my daughter, I uh, believe mm Jemiah. -hmm. And Okay. um I'm sure Platt was going every other direction. I wasn't that good at it, to be honest. <laughs> See, to be I'm honest, sure. did you hear that, Lisa? Right. Lisa, Just to be, be honest. honest. <laughs> was J Jemiah was first born, right? She was the first one born. Yes, yes, that's my eldest. She just graduated. Um, Jemiah was the first. We we have six, so I followed close to mom and dad. They had seven. I stopped at six. Uh, my wife's parents um, had five, so we're kind of like in the middle between the two sets. But yeah, Jemiah is my eldest. I have a uh, Micah Jr. Uh, I have also Michaela. Uh, after that is Joseph, then Ezra, and then Josiah. So four boys and two girls. <laughs> 
I love it. Nice, nice. I love it too. And we, 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 we're trying to, you know, get the history because it's important. We know that, you know, it, we're two honest mamas, but we know we have fathers that are out there and who plays the role of both. You know, you come from a family of a mom and a dad, which, you know, I've heard a lot of great things about him, as you just mentioned, which is a great thing. But, you know, I, I, I had a couple of questions for you, you know, okay. as, honestly being um, a, a father, you know, of six kind of in the same footsteps of your parents a little bit, you know, just one less. Did you ever think that you were going to have that many kids? No. Uh, when I was younger, I was involved in like like the hip hop industry and music or rap before I got into ministry. So my goal. Uh -oh. That's my OK. Goal, yeah. Hey, turn that yeah. On. My goal at the time was I didn't think I was going to have hardly any kids, probably like I didn't. Oh, I, wow. Children weren't really on the radar at that point in life. And then later on, I said, well, OK, if I do have some, maybe two. Mm -hmm. But uh, over time, by and by, you know, uh, we had our first three and I was kind of like good at three. I was like, OK, we got three. We're doing all right. We got, you know, a girl, a boy. We broke even. Then we got another girl, Michaela. And I was kind of content. And uh, my mom and my wife actually double teamed me one day, like on one. Oh, end, wow. Mika was like, you know, she wanted another child. And then my um my mother was like, you know, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And your wife, you know, that scripture got to come in. If you got to, right. you got to. Right. right. And she's like, if you could afford another baby, you should have one. And I'm like, ma, that's easy for you to say. You don't have to do all the money raising them. So we, we, she, <laughs> God already told me it's going to be a boy. And Mika's like, yeah, it's going to be a boy. And I'm like, we got a 50 50 chance here, y'all. It turned out to be a boy, you know, and it was Joseph. So I said, we broke even again. Two boys, two girls. We could stop now. But we had to keep okay. going. And we ended up with a uh, six. <laughs> Nice. Wow, nice. Awesome number. That's a awesome. That's even, you know, that's an even number of kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Congratulations as well. Yeah. Even number. And then you said you got one that graduated from. So you talked about graduated from high school. High school. Correct? Or, woo, yep. That's a big, that's a big move. So we're going yeah. to be yeah, honest. Yeah, we're going to applaud you. Uh, it oh, ain't thank easy you. to get. Is, 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 is it a girl? Yes, it's the girl. The first one, Jemai, the eldest. She she just graduated high school this year. That's so extremely awesome. excited. She plans to go to school for nursing. So I'm happy about that. It'd be like, you know, a traveling nurse. So excited mm -hmm. about that. So wow. Lisa, do, Lily, do you have any questions you want to ask? Because I'm going to put my glasses on and get the rest of my questions I got here. Going. Oh, absolutely. So, Micah, in this you know, day and time with you saying that you have six wonderful kids, you have a wife. Um, are you the sole breadwinner? Yeah, yes. Um, we we kind of run a traditional ship in the house. It was something we both had kind of talked about and agreed upon early on in our relationship. So at the time, Mika was working in banking. And um, let's see, I was doing some of everything because, like I said, I came out of music and was working jobs and flipping and getting other jobs. And I ended up in logistics. So uh, the last job she had, if I'm not mistaken, while we were in that earlier phase before children, she had been in banking for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we had purchased the home and we had agreed that she wanted to stay home and homeschool and kind of raise the kids in a oh, non-traditional wow. sense. And homeschooling? <laughs> that is amazing. Yes. Uh, I'm being honest. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, get, it gets tough because, you know, at first when it was just two or three, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But when you get to like a family of eight and you're the only one that's like kind of providing, it can become, you know, stressful and and, and it's yeah. a daunting task. And I I know Absolutely. a lot of times guys, you know, get a bad rep because they're like, man, it's tough. I'm out. You know, hey, you going to go to work. You better go do something. But I, I really enjoy the fact that she gets that time with the kids and it brings about a closeness. And it kind of reminiscent for me because my dad was military. My mom was at home all the time. It just kind of feels familiar for me more so. Uh -huh. But um, I, and, I, I and, and that. that's a job in itself, because that's anybody true. that's homeschooling, you know, get credit for that. Credit is mm -hmm. due. That's a job in itself. You know, that's not an easy yes. thing to do. Oh, it's work because Meek is literally doing like. 12th grade, 11th grade, 5th grade, 3rd grade, all these wow. different grades at, wow. in one day. So, I didn't, I mean, you kind of take it for granted because at first you're like, oh, she's just staying at home. She could watch TV, bonbons, and put them in front of a game system. But she's really <laughs> involved. Like, they planted yeah. gardens and done trips. So, she really enjoys wow. it. And I'm happy to be able to do that for her at the time. Awesome. Of the I love that. Their names, their names are unique. 
Was there a meaning behind any of them? Yes. All of the names we try to we try to be kind of thoughtful with the name. So with there Jamaica, is power in the name. All right now, yes. <laughs> and a good there name. Is power name. Jesus. <laughs> there is power in that name. <laughs> oh yeah. So like we we, we went with Jemaya because of my mm. wife's full name was Jamaica mm. and mine was Micah. And mm -hmm. we were like, well, you know, we like to kind of combine our names for the first. So that's where Jemiah came from. Uh -huh. And we gave her um, her mother, my wife's mother's middle name, because that was her first granddaughter. Gotcha, so we thought gotcha. it would be kind of cool to give her, you know, her middle name. Very and nice. then um, Micah Jr. was kind of, when he came, Mika was like, look, you, it's a boy. We might not have another. You might want to go ahead and get a junior now, because you never know. What's gonna happen. <laughs> and I was like, no, I she love, I love that. And it was interesting because I, I to back she the train. She was being little... honest. She was being honest, and I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. She was. And then mm -hmm. after that, um, you know, when Michaela came, um, the way we came up with Michaela at the time, we, we were sticking with like an M or a J since that was uh -huh. both our names at the time. So, um, her sister and my mom the same day actually reached out with the name Michaela. They both the oh. same day was like, we think Michaela would be a great name, and uh, me and Mika loved the name. And then we um, hyphenated my mother's first name with Michaela's middle name, which was Anna. So we added the Ann in her name. And then um, from there, uh, Joseph, when they knew it was going to be a boy, uh, my mother's father's name was Joseph. And we knew it was mm -hmm. a Bible character. It was another J because we were doing like a J and an M with Jemiah, then Micah, then Michaela. Now back to the J. So we went with Joseph and uh, we tried to get all biblical names for the boys. So his like, even their middle names are like biblical names. It's interesting. So from there... Um, when Ezra came, we were going to go with the M again. We thought he would uh -huh. be it, that he would break the cycle because we had did J M M J. So, well, mm -hmm, okay, well, mm -hmm. we might give him a different name just to stand out, but we'll still give him a M or a J for a middle name. And Facebook was still kind of popping in. So I actually went on Facebook and did like a survey like, hey, do you guys like Michael Ezra or Ezra Michael? And people were responding and going back and forth. And I, I grew up with a kid named Ezra. So I always liked uh -huh. him, Ezra. So we chose Ezra for him. Thought that was it. We were pretty much done. And then, you know, God, you know, bless us with Josiah. And um, the interesting thing is total pregnancies. Yeah, we back it up like total pregnancies. We uh, we we suffered. Um, Jemiah, our first was a rainbow baby. We lost our first. And between Ezra and Josiah, um, we had lost three. So it was mm -hmm. a it was a real challenging um, time because. After Ezra and after the third um, time miscarrying, you know, at that point, my wife was like, you know, maybe it's just not wow. for us to have any more and we should just kind of let it go. And then, you know, Josiah came. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, 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 right. So then, so, so, so elaborate on that piece, because that is the piece that, you know, as fathers, you know, you know, you, you, you miscarry or you, you, you lose three children emotionally. Yes. What? sustains you because you know most fathers you know they they lose a the kid like oh i lost a child whatever what right got you we you know spiritually you know physically and things that you've done for you and your wife to continue to push to have more kids what 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 emotionally helped you it, it was a lot was i mean because it was mm -hmm. it was like it was like four total with the first and then mm -hmm. the three consecutively and the doctors were saying it was an anomaly because they were like there's no way you know you can miscarry this many times that you've already mm -hmm. had so many successful pregnancies but um the first time i remember was really hard because um i got the call i was at work and they couldn't find a heartbeat and I had to come in and it, it was a broken time i mean i know they say you know men don't cry and all that stuff right, but Jesus, right. Jesus wept so i'm <laughs> at the hospital you know i cried with her we both um had that downtime together mm -hmm. and prayed and um you know, we had to wait a while before we could try again and just try to console her and be there. I, I had to learn. I know, like, Pastor Larry did a really good job of, like, focus on the family and, and, and trying to help the men to get in tune with their feelings when dealing with um, wives and, and how to dwell with your wife according to knowledge, like the scripture says. So I kind of tried to tune in to mm -hmm. her emotions and her feelings because it was a downtime. It was a time of, you know, sorrow, sackcloth and ashes, as they say in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. But... Our faith kept us going. We, we believe the promise that God would, mm -hmm. you know, if he said be fruitful and multiply and he would bless, we believe we would eventually have um, a child. And I remember when Jemiah, we first heard the heartbeat, it was like a big sigh of relief in the medical room for us, at least. It was like, whoa, we just want to hear the heartbeat. We just want to know we have a heartbeat. 
and um, kind of went from there. And we would have never imagined the the, mm-hmm. the three that would have come later. But ironically, some other people in the church we know had um, similar situations where they may have lost. And I remember one time one of the fathers came to my house um, when he lost his child. And when he saw me, he just kind of broke down and hugged me. And he was like, I don't know how you made it with three. He said, I'm struggling with just this first one. How did you make it after losing, you know, the three? Because he knew our situation. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was it was tough. And I got to give Mika credit. She really is a strong woman. You know, she's endured a lot of hardship in life. And she's just been willing to to face those challenges and especially dealing with me. (laughs) I probably one of her many challenges. That's awesome, Micah. (laughs) Yeah, so we had to overcome that. But just through prayer, faith in God, and Mm -hmm. being honest with your emotions, because a lot of people will brush it off and say, I'm okay. But it's okay to not be okay. Okay. I realize I'm really not okay. This really hurts. Like, God, this doesn't feel good, and I'm I'm broken. I need you to to reach down in my spirit and help me because I need direction. And he, he did just that for us. So that is terrific. Oh, man, you know, and, and, and that's what being honest that, you know, it's not always a happy time, right? Nope. But it's a bright time because, you know, God says he will bring light at the end of the tunnel. You know, he's going to brighten up our days, even yes. in the midst of what we're going through. He told us to be steadfast, unmovable, and abounding in the work of him. And you, you did that. And so, but with through that, that emotion and stuff, you know, it's so good to have you, you know, emotionally did you gravitate to anything like a toy like when you were little what what what, you know what was your favorite toy like you know did you grab the pillow and you cried in the pillow what did you do what (laughs) what, what emotional you know connection you know I know you had the word but anything particular that made a reflect back to your childhood I mean for me most of the family or the people that know me that are close to me know like the martial arts it was a big part of my life growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, ALF, like everybody in the 80s at the time loved ALF and Ninja Turtles and all that stuff. But for me, like um, as a child, my mom kind of instilled early on a uh, love for the Bible and God. Because I remember like David and Goliath was one of my favorite, you know, David was one of my favorite Bible characters and and, and things of that nature. And as I grew, you know, um, I had a, I had a close knit family, uh, although our, sib- our siblings are so spread apart. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get to enjoy being a baby long because like two years after I was born, um, my oldest sister had her daughter. So I got like a niece like right behind me. So there's pictures of me with my arms around her, you know, trying to protect D. Like I'm the big brother before I even got to really grow teeth good and be, you know, a kid. But so just having that many nieces and nephews and that close knit group help. Mm -hmm. I think emotionally, um, my dad, because he was so you know, traveling with the military, my mom kind of made it a point for me to kind of watch what he does and express myself verbally. So she kind of gave me a love for like poetry, for films, for books. I was reading poems and Langston mm-hmm. Hughes. You know, we're oh, watching old yeah. Danny Kaye films in the 80s. Yeah, oh. she, so between the cinema and everything, she kind of helped give me like a, well, I talk so much probably from her side as well. <laughs> but yeah. it helped. Well, that helped. That helped. So, um, I don't know if Lisa has any more questions, but I have a question. What do what, what you think, like, when you look at your kids, you talked about your children, today that, you know, kids had that is different than what we had. You know, be honest, you know, me and Lisa, right. we don't have much time, but we're going to be running out. But just, just that one thing, you know, that, you know, that you could say that is different when you were a kid and now where we are. Oh, yeah. yeah. So much is different now. Yeah, so much. That's why we wanted to bring you on too. We wanted to talk about that real quick. I mean, just the cell phones alone are a game changer because all of our phones was hooked to a wall. If you wasn't doing the rotary dial at first, by the time we did, you know, get to where we had a cordless phone in the house, you still had to go click on hold if somebody mm-hmm. called. Uh, your mama could pick up the other phone in the other room and say, hey, I need you to get off. I need to use the phone to embarrass you in front of somebody. <laughs> if you called a girl late at night, her dad more than likely or mom would answer the phone like, who are you? Who, what, what you calling this time of night? So them having the cell phone was one thing I see there's a big difference with us because it's a computer. They can entertain themselves with it. They can watch videos. They can learn from it. They can learn the wrong things from it. Mm-hmm. They can, mm-hmm. you know, find directions with the phone versus having to get 
Google Maps or a piece of paper and write there. You know, we you know back then it's like, hey, pass the McDonald's, the third light on the left, and you're gonna see a big red truck. When we pass the barn, you ride on my street, look for this number. They don't have that. Like they can right. just boom, the GPS leads you right to where you're going. So that I know is one that I see the youth have that I'm like, wow, if only they knew. Um, of course, I remember vinyl. I, I missed the eight track, but I do remember vinyl where we put it on, put the record on needle and put the little nickel on the back of it to hold it mm-hmm. down with a penny. And you know, I we I played records <laughs> like growing up as a kid. I played Michael Jackson bad. I think I wore the song out with my older brother and it got on his nerves. We was in Greensboro, North Carolina. So I see a lot of changes the kids have now that we didn't. That uh, yeah. I, I wish we could have had some of. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Micah. We're gonna close it out right now. What would be your last thing that you can say to fathers? Because I was, we're about to go off um, the air. So, what would you say to fathers? I, w- I would just tell them that um, no matter how hard it gets and no matter mm-hmm. how much time is going by, don't take for granted uh, the the blessing you have of being called to be a father. Mm. If, if you feel like you haven't done that great a job, um, you know, find the humility in Christ Jesus to, you know, apologize, repent for it. Go back to your kids and fight for your children, because I do a couple of things on my shows about fatherlessness. And that's one of my passions is trying to help the youth to understand the importance of mm. their dads being around. I go over statistics on, you know, how many dropouts, how many suicide rates, how many fights in school and behavioral issues we have because of a lack of fathers. So I, I kind of try to emphasize that, you know, dad, you are important, but don't overstate your role to where you negate mom or feel like, see, that's why you're going through what you're going through now. You know, don't take that <laughs> position, but try uh-huh. to like bridge the gap and work with the women and the children so that they can have a fighting chance in this world. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's I good. love that. That's good. I, lo- I love that so much, Micah, for so many reasons, because the dads of today need to hear that. You know, you need to hear you need to we need to see more positive fathers. There are positive fathers out there that are married to um, their, you know, their kids, mother, and right. they're enjoying it. And it's not a problem. And people need to see that because we've right. gotten so far away from that yes. that you know it's it you know it's hard to find a two parent household. And mm. um, you know, and the kids need both. They need the mom and the dad. The dad plays a positive in their life. And Absolutely. so, you know, I love that. I love that you came on the show. Um, oh, I love you. that um, you took time out to be open and honest. Yeah, with what's really going on. We appreciate the honesty. Oh no, nah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we all with two honest mamas. We gotta be honest on that, definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I was just gonna say, no, you're right. The 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 dads. It's it's a sad rap because it's one of the things I point out sometimes when I'm speaking on mm-hmm. issues with 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 the men, and I let them know like. It's hard because so many TVs and sitcoms have made the dad like the brunt of the joke, where it's like, oh, we make fun of the dad. He don't know what he's talking about. He an old man. He crazy, you know. And and that I think plays into the psyche of some men, and, right? And it, in our it, society it, as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's like when the dads are kind of like played to the left, and oh, he's an old man. He don't know, mm-hmm. he, you know. And then the way they look to the white, well, she's a ball and chain. She's holding me down. She holding me back. So you have this fighting, infighting within the home that's unnecessary. And I mean, there are rare cases like I've had two homeboys. It was the most amazing thing to me growing up. I had one in particular where um, his his baby mother at the time didn't want the child and literally just left him to raise a child. And I remember when we first, you know, started hanging out and he has his daughter and he's just like, I got to be a dad, bro. Like, I got to step up. And to this day, you know, he's he's really been in her corner. He's always been there for his daughter. I mean, fought for her in court, did everything he had to do. Um, since the mother didn't want her at the time. I, I commend, you know, dad. I'm like, bro, you stepped up. You know, most guys would have been like, mama, grandma, yeah. can y'all yeah. come help me? Because I can't, you <laughs> know. I, family, where you at? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. So there are a few, you know, few and far in between. And mm-hmm. then I have met others that have left their kids, moved to a whole other state. And they're like, my kids are grown and I'm still right. paying child support. That ain't right. And I'm like, bro, you abandoned them. You need to apologize. You know, you need to bring it You've seen it on the radio right now. You know, I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but Russell Simmons is going on disclaimer. You know, we don't want to rest. But, 
you know, with his children. They're grown now and they feel like, you know, dad, you know, he's, he's screaming, I'm not screaming, you know, for college that they want to go to, you know, and things right. of that nature. So, you know, it's not always the material things, right? Sometimes right. the heart, you know, the yes. heart, the love that you pour out. And that's what I feel not, you know, ever interviewing you before that's what i feel zooming through this oh, zoom thank you absolutely absolutely oh, i hats appreciate off it. To you hats off to you by god hats because off to you. you put god first and you were reared and Man. raised that way now you instill it in your kids and it's going to continue to you're going to reap what you sow so i, oh, I thank you I appreciate it. What you said is so true. Being there is important. I saw this last day. I'll just say this real fast. I -hmm. saw a post that one of my friends made on Facebook that really was like, it it touched my heart because it was a Father's Day tribute to his dad. And he said that he couldn't imagine going out the house or going out the front door and not hearing his father's truck pull up Mm. after work. And he said, you know, you may not have given me everything I wanted. You may not have been this, that, and the third, but you were always there. So I just want to tell the fathers, don't underestimate your presence. Like, just be there in those moments. You may not have the money. I've definitely had times where, you know, we didn't have it. You know, it's like, I wish I could give. But (laughs) what I have, I will get off my back if I have to to see the kids survive. And we have to do those things. (laughs) Yes. Well, we thank you. Absolutely. Like Lily said, Lisa said, we thank you for taking this opportunity. We don't have oh, much to you. give you, but uh, I think I got a little trophy or something over here. It's, <laughs> it's called the little pin pin. Wee, my God. <laughs> All <laughs> right. I'm hearing you on. We I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having yeah. me. And, and everybody out there, thank you for even watching and listening. Make sure you share, subscribe, and like this content. Follow yes. through so that it can yes. get out to a more and more people and we can reach more and more people out there that need to hear these kind of messages. Absolutely. Right. It will not be the last time we have you on. All right? Absolutely. We will have you on again. Share, yeah, subscribe. And, and I'll, two mm-hmm. honest yeah. mamas. Two That's honest right. mamas. And follow the, um, the Micah Dobbins show too, guys. He, um, if you can see the back of his logo, um, oh, take yeah. the time out to hear the Micah Dobbins show as well. We appreciate you, Micah. No problem. I appreciate you both for having me. Thank you.